Feedback is such a powerful tool for you as an Agile coach, both if you are giving it to someone and if you are receiving it from someone. And like any powerful tool, there is a lot of misunderstanding. So in this video, we are going to talk about what really is feedback, what most people get wrong about feedback, and then let's gonna look at two models that I'm particularly very fond of. So let's get started. Let's start with the definition. What is feedback? In here, I'm going to recruit some help from system thinking and say that feedback is what occurs when outputs of a system are rerouted back as inputs as part of a chain of cause and effect that forms a circuit or a loop. The system can then be said to feedback into itself. So you imagine there is an action, there is a reaction. In the context of organizations, that reaction is the reaction of other people or processes around us. When we take an action, when you do something, when you say something, do the procedures allow you to do so? Do you have a problem because you took an action? Does something good happen because you took an action? How do other people feel because of what you said or what you've done? So in the context of organization, feedback really is uh, what are the processes we take, what are the things that we do, what is it that other people give to you after you said something or you've done something. It relates to performance, our performance as individuals or as teams in the organization even at large. And performance here is in the context of execution, of performing the work. We're not necessarily talking about appraisals uh, of jobs and, um, and promotion, although feedback can and is used in those circumstances as well. But if you had a meeting with someone and the colleague comes and give you some feedback about what happened in that session, there you have it, that is feedback. Feedback doesn't need to be that 360 form that you will fill up once a year for the purpose of um, someone else receiving the um, what we call performance review in organization. So it's an important distinction to make in there. And that actually starts bringing us to the second part. The second part is what people mostly get wrong about feedback. Today in the culture of organizations, I think one of the most important things to understand is that feedback is different than opinion. Remember, it's an output that now became an input. So you're expected to put that back into the system so that it can cause something to work ideally better. So when I just give my opinions, I'm pretty sure I have plenty, I have to really think about what is this going to cause? What is this going to do? Because imagine if you're just giving opinions to each other all the time, that is a lot of information, we get overwhelmed. And not every opinion is valid. So when you say something like that you like to work with someone, if you just say that something is good or bad, this is very personal, this is an opinion, and in that moment you are not giving anybody's feedback, you are stating your personal opinion. In order for it to be feedback, it has to be a little bit more structured, and we're going to look into that in the third piece of this video when we talk about the, um, the feedback models. Another thing that people seem to get wrong about feedback is that you are not required to act on the feedback that you receive. You don't have to do anything with the feedback that someone just gave you. In fact, I recommend you that you don't. I feel like we all act a little bit too fast on all the things that we see and the receive. Uh, we are in teams, we are in organizations, we are surrounded by complexity. So a lot of things, they, they might not be what they seem. And sometimes a few things that might happen that they are atypical. A certain behavior that you had might not be your average behavior. And if you feel like you have to act on the response to what someone said. Let's say one particular day, you uh, maybe you rushed a little bit to deliver something, um, and then you start thinking that you have a problem, that you always rush, and that you need to control yourself, when in fact, it was just this one situation. So you don't need to look at a feedback as a, I already need to improve on this part of my behavior, no. Listen to what people say, take that information, thank people. It's always good to know and, and gain that awareness, but notice trends, 
allow yourself to receive a lot of feedback before you decide to act. This makes you be able to zoom out and see like, what is it that keep happening consistently? What is it that people are always telling me that I do or that I don't do? Now that is a good piece for you to start thinking, I want to then improve myself, get a lot better at doing this thing that people are consistently telling me because this seems to be a pattern. And that thing that people are telling you is many times just bad stuff. That's it. I don't know why a lot of people seem to think that giving feedback is just talking about the bad stuff. You know, like a, something that you misspoke, a misstep that you, you made, something that you didn't deliver quite right. I mean, those are feedback, all right, but are you being told how many times to do something very well, something that you should keep doing so that you can also notice the trends and the good things that you've done? So the fact that a lot of people really seem to focus on what is the bad stuff and feedback is not only about bad and constructive things, is really damaging for you to be able to improve. So that is actually something that is going to lead us to the very first model that is really my favorite feedback model. The strength-based feedback model. This one comes from the world of therapy in the late 1990s and was invented in the University of Kansas. And what I love about this model is that it's all about amplifying what already works well. So if you're familiar with a little bit of math and the compounding effects of interest rates and things of the nature, that's basically what is happening here. So these scientists, they discover, they, they notice that the most amazing patient the, would get better by focusing on the things that were already going well, whether it was addiction, whether it was a disease. And then they notice that people who are excellent programmers, people who are fantastic, um, you know, they are in the C-suite of the organization. They, they focus on what is it that makes them amazing at what they are, and they double down on that. Now, they didn't abandon their weaknesses, though, and just, you know, became completely unbalanced. That's not what this model is about. But in fact, this model tells you to, if you have something to improve on, make sure that you borrow from the place where you have strengths. So it's really a very approach of resourcefulness instead of lack. So what could it look like in an example? Let's say you just had a budget meeting with someone and you notice that they were just amazing at looking at the numbers and, and having a proper scrutiny and helping everything to, you know, all the numbers to be in place. Make sure to mention that. Be that precise and say, well, your, your ability with numbers is really great. You were instrumental in that meeting. When you look at, you know, such and such sheet, we were so lost and you were able to help us find uh, what was needed in there. You're giving such a very nice, precise uh, instruction on how you just helped us to get much better. That person now knows that, wow, I never noticed that I was so good with numbers. Or maybe they know and, and now they feel even more confident about that ability and just will keep improving on that. And then conversely, you could use the, the, you know, the ability of someone to help them realize where they sometimes fall short, but always from a place of resourcefulness. So let's say there was this meeting and the, um, you know, maybe the colleague was distracted and that was a, you know, it was a true story. And I, I had this colleague and I was telling them, well, um, you know, person so-and-so, you are usually so amazing in your contributions because you're so succinct and so clear and so precise when you tell us your ideas. So I wonder what is it that we could do so that you can participate more in the meetings? I know that you like to prepare and take some time and do the readings and think about before you show up. So I'm really wondering in there what I could do to help you come in the meetings with, uh, you know, with everything that you need to make sure that your ideas are heard because they are really great. So that's kind of the, uh, you know, the way in which you, you would use strength-based feedback to uh, help a colleague or to just give someone a performance feedback on the things that they are really good at and even in the things that if they fall short, you are at least required to notice the strength of that person. That's the beauty of this model. You can't just go in and criticize and talk about bad stuff. You have to notice what works first. 
The second model is the SBI, which stands for Situation, Behavior, and Impact. That is a lot more well-known. And in this model, you're really trying to give the situation, the behavior, and the impact. That is to say, the full context so that the person receiving the feedback can really understand and you as the person giving the feedback can be very precise. Remember when we said in the beginning of this video that feedback is not an opinion? So this model helps you format things, going away from the world of opinions and contextualizing things a little bit more precisely. So an example would then be, let's say, a negative feedback. You, would then, you could then say, when? what and what happened so you know in that meeting when you said that thing i i felt insecure and i felt a little bit frustrated because uh you mentioned something that we had shared before and i thought we had shared that thing in strict confidence so i'm being a little bit more clear about why what is it that you do and why the impact on me happened and now you can choose what is it that you want to do with the uh, information that i am giving you as you can see you can also use that model in a positive light and suppose that in that same meeting you have actually backed up my ideas and supported me and said very kind and encouraging words i then say that to you and say you know and i mentioned very clearly that it was in that meeting those are the things that you said this is the behavior that you took and that's how you made me feel and you made me feel empowered you made me feel confident so the person once again they had the full context they have the full package and they can then bring that feedback home to you know marinate and decide what to do with it later on so those were the two models i want to share with you today because i really love them there are many more models. There is the CDAR model, there is the STAR model. Those are all acronyms. And if there's a model that you're really interested in, you want me to cover here, make a comment down below. I'll, I'll make sure to look into it. Um, one thing I would mention though is not all feedback models give you um, an idea on how to suggest improvement for the person that you're giving feedback to. Personally, I like that. I don't think that you as someone giving feedback should be giving anyone anybody um, insights on how they should improve unless that is asked specifically the coaching me you know i will not be advising you on how you should proceed i can only explain what i saw positively or negatively and then you take that information and then you're going to mull it over if you want to and decide what is it that you want to do i i think that is very very advisable that you stay away from telling people how they should be you know what they should do how they should go about improving themselves i think that's uh, you know that falls a little bit outside of the um the, the the category of feedback given i think that becomes something else so use the advice giving that comes after the feedback with a lot of caution in conclusion feedback is a tool in the context of organizations for developing people period improving their performance my contribution to the world of feedback is just to think about it as a gift are you gifting everybody everywhere all the time I don't think so, right? So do the same with feedback. Use it sparingly, use it intentionally, wrap it nicely. So think about the why, the how, uh, how is it that you're gonna phrase the feedback? And most importantly, you know, think about how you deliver it and in the intention behind that is um, you meant for that person to feel that they got something valuable from you because that was a gift right? That's what gifts do. They bring value to the people who receive them. So I hope this was an insightful video for you in the world of feedback. And uh, I'll end this video here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.